Welcome back, folks. This next section of the notes on taxonomy deals with taxons themselves or the different grouping levels that we're going to look at. So um, taxons, these are the different levels of grouping, just like we learned in the last section about birds. We got, you know, the big group birds and then smaller group waterfowl then the smaller group ducks. Well, taxons would be the name we give to those groups. Um, so um, if we wanted to call the really big group of birds the uh, humongous group is birds, the big group is waterfowl, the medium group is ducks, and the small group is mallards, huge, large, medium, and small. Those would be the different names of the taxon as well. In taxonomy, we use things like kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Okay. Kingdom, you've probably all heard before, right? We are part of the animal kingdom. All animals are in the same big group called the animal kingdom. And you've probably heard of species before, right? We are, our species is humans. There's only one of us. We're the, the same organism, okay? But the ones in between maybe you haven't heard of. Um, but here's a way to remember uh, the order of these different taxons, these different groupings. Kings play chess on fiberglass stools. That is how I learned it when I was your age in high school, and I remember it to this day. Kings play chess on fiberglass stools. Um, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I would recommend coming up with your own um, mnemonic device to remember this. It is one of the questions on the study guys. if you haven't done that yet. Um, I do give you mine as a reminder, but what I want you to do is come up with your own. That will help you remember it a little bit better. Um, here we got just our taxonomic breakdown. The kingdom we belong to, can't see it on the bottom here, but we got kingdom, we're animals, like we said before. Our phylum, we can take animals, we can break them down to smaller phylums. One of those is chordates. Chordates means we have a spinal cord, okay? As opposed to things that don't, like worms or insects. They're animals too, no spinal cord, they're in a different group, they're not in the same phylum. Within the chordates, we can break those down to a whole bunch of different things. Um, into a class. We belong to the class mammalia or mammals. Um, here's where you also break it down into reptiles and birds um, and amphibians. We're mammals. Talked about that before. Fur, milk to our young, that sort of thing. Within the mammals, we can start breaking it down into smaller group called orders. Um, we're primates along with apes and uh, monkeys. Um, Different from, say, the order carnivora, which would be uh, meat eaters like dogs and uh, bears and things like that, and cats. Um, if we break down primates more, uh, you get hominids. There are no other hominids on the planet right now. Um, unless you think that Sasquatch and Yeti are real, if they are real, they are likely hominids from the descriptions. Um, they're more closer to humans than other primates are. So they'd probably be in the hominids walking upright, uh, flat faces, eyes in front so they can see three-dimensionally and things like that. Um, but there's really none of those walking earth right now. Hominids we can break down to even smaller groupings called, and ours, our genus is homo. That means walking upright with large brains. So Sasquatch, yeah, they, they might be homo or they might be hominids. We don't have a specimen, so we can't say uh, if they're out there. Um, and then our species is sapiens, right there. Sapiens is our species. Homo is our genus. Sapiens is our species name. So scientific names come from your genus and your species put together. Um, here is another example. Move this down here. Um, all these are animals, including the jellyfish and the clam and the coral and the spider. Um, if we go down just chordata, things with spinal cords, we get rid of some of these things up here. Look a lot different, very different, just like when you're doing dichotomous keys. Um, the more different they are, uh, they should be in a different group. These are all mammals, fur and uh, milk to the young. Carnivores, canididae, dogs and wolves and coyotes and foxes. Down the bottom, or the next one, genus canis, you get rid of foxes. Okay, they're not as closely related to, say, the wolf as there are some other things. Um, and then lastly, you get down to Canis lupus, which is uh, in the genus Canis, 
species lupus, or the wolf. Um, same thing here. You can just see animal kingdom. This is the different groups that the wolf and the coyote belong to. And they see they're in the same groups all the way down until you get to coyote and fox. You get to the species. They have the same genus, so they're closely related, but they're not the same species. And we already mentioned this, but how do you name things? We always name them using their genus and species groups. So we are in the genus Homo, the species Sapiens. So our full scientific name is Homo sapiens, uh, which literally means man wise. Homo means man, sapiens means wise. Um, so we're a little egotistical in how we name ourselves. Um, another thing to notice is that it's in italics and that the genus is always capitalized and the species is always lowercase. Um, you can see it down here for the red oak. Quercus is their genus. Rubrum is the species. So oak red. Um, here we've got a um, picture of different uh, big cats. Lions and tigers and panthers and leopards and jaguars and things here. They are all part of the same genus, the Panthera genus. Um, but you'll notice, so they all start with Panthera for their scientific name. Because they're closely related, but they're not the same species. And their species names are different. Leo for lion, Onca for jaguar, Hardis for leopard. Tigris for tiger. And that brings up a good point. How do we know if some things are just from the same genus? Or maybe they're the same species. How do we know if they're the same species if they're really close? Well, you could look at things like DNA and structures and do they look similar? That gets you close. But the, the um, end all and be all of it is um, can they mate like this horse and this donkey and produce kids like this mule? So that means their DNA is going to be really close. If they can actually mate, their DNA is pretty darn on close to each other, so they might be the same species because they had a kid. But um, here's the kicker up here. Fertile offspring. Did they produce fertile offspring? I don't know if you guys know this, but mules cannot mate. Mules cannot have more mules. The only way to get mules is to have a horse and a donkey mate. So mules are a hybrid. They are not a separate species. And horses and donkeys are separate species. They're in the same genus. They're almost the same species, but not quite because they can have kids. But the kids can't have kids. They can't perpetuate that species on into the future. Um, here we've got, um, let's move around the bottom, uh, one for a fox. And I want you to take a look at this. We've got the, all, the, all the taxon names that the fox belongs to. Kingdom, Animalia, Phylum Chordata, Class Mammalia, Order, Carnivora, Family, Kinidae, Genus, Vulpes, and Species, Vulpes. I want you to take one minute and think of the um, scientific name for the fox. Let's see, did you get it right? It is, remember, you always put the genus... And the species name, which I can't show you because it's underneath this thing, but genus and the species. So it's Vulpes. Vulpes is the scientific name for the fox. All right. Um, and the next thing, guys, that's going to end the notes for us here in this section. Um, we've got another section of notes on the kingdom um, that I'll put together for you as well. And I will see you guys a little bit later.